Hi booktube, it's Andrea and I'm going to do my April wrap up. I actually managed to read something like nine books or something like that. Let me just check. One, two, three, four, five. Nine books in April, which is obviously a huge jump from the previous months of four and two. And that's obviously because the baby is still very hard to find time to do a lot of reading, but it is picking up again slowly. So I thought I'd just go through quickly with you what I read. Uh, in April and what I thought about them. Uh, there are a couple of audiobooks in here and in fact the first one is an audiobook and that is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes read by Stephen Fry. Um, obviously I downloaded this from Audible. It does take me a while to get through audiobooks. I only listen to them every now and again. Um, the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is a series of short stories um, obviously about Sherlock Holmes. I love all the Sherlock Holmes one and Stephen Fry reading them is absolutely fantastic so uh, I really enjoy it. There's not a lot to say about that because it's, a, uh, you know, it's Sherlock Holmes, you can't go wrong with it. And then I read book two in the Vinyl Detective series by Andrew Cartmel and this one's called The Run Out Groove. Last year or the year before I read the first book which was written in Dead Wax and I really enjoyed it so I didn't get this when it first came out, it came out last May. And I only got it in like this April because I knew the third one was coming out in May and I wanted to get and read this. So this follows our, our hero, the vinyl detective, whose name I can't remember because it is written in the first person so I can't remember his name though I know he tells us it in the first book. Um, and his girlfriend Avada and their friend Tinkler and then um, someone they know called Stinky Stamfer. Um, and in this book uh, they are investigating uh, the the death of a lead singer of a great rock band in the 60s named Valerian and the disappearance of her child. So Valerian killed herself and her her boy, her son disappeared. So basically the back of it says that the van takes found themselves marked for death at the wrong end of a shotgun and unknowingly dosed with LSD as a prelude to being burned alive and then there's the grave robin. Um, so as with the first book, it is extremely funny. You do have to suspend some disbelief that these guys would actually go and do this all for the sake of, say, a record. Um, but it is really good. And like I said, I have been really enjoying the series. So the first one I enjoyed, this one's really good. And I have now read the third one. Oh, oh, oh dear. Excuse me, I better go and see what's wrong. Sorry about that. I think she woke up and wondered where mummy had gone. She was lying in a basket, but. Oh dear, it's, it's hard going. <laughs> so yes, I did enjoy the first one and the second one. I've now read the third one, which you will see in my May wrap up and I might do a series overview as well. Absolutely love it. Fourth one's out next year. I can't believe I've got to wait a whole year. It's horrible waiting a whole year, isn't it? So yes, it tells the story of um, investigating the death of Valerian and the search for her lost child. And then along the way they uh, find lots of records, as they always do, which is always fun because I love records as well. So I enjoyed that one. And then I read uh, The Battered Body Beneath the Flagstone and Other Victorious Scandals by Michelle Morgan. There is a full video review of this on the channel. Um, so if you want to check that out, if you just go into my previous videos, you should be able to find it. Basically, this is a non-fiction book, which... Um, looks into various scandals from the Victorian era, mostly murder, some adultery. Some of them were very high profile cases at the time, such as the case of William Terrace, who was a, a very well known Victorian actor who was stabbed outside the out of a, outside the Adelphi Theatre in 1879. Absolutely fascinating book, so do check it out. Mm -hmm. And it, like I said before, you can read this in sections because each story has its own title it's not written in one big flowing chapter so each story is um on its own so if you just wanted to read one you could read one then go away for three weeks and then come back and read some more and you wouldn't forget where you were with it so that's definitely a recommendation i always recommend michelle morgan's books because she's just an absolutely brilliant author um and there'll be another more from her at some point i'm sure i don't have all her books i'm not gonna lie uh, next on the list after that was the new Jodie Taylor book, An Argumentation of Historians. This actually came out in April. I had it a week before release date because fortunately for me, my partner works in Cardiff Bay where Axe and Precious oh, dear. headquarters are. Oh, darling girl, come here. Oh, come here. It's all right. Um, 
and he picked it up on the day that Jodie Taylor was actually in there signing copies so it is actually a signed copy as well and this just follows the story of Max and uh, their ongoing battle with uh, Clive Ronan. They go to see the uh, accident uh, of, that changed the personality allegedly of Henry VIII um, when he was jousting. Um, Clive Ronan shows up at some point in one of the stories um, and she ends up living 650 years before her own time and she's there for like a year so she has to make do and live and she is convinced she's never going to get back she's abandoned there by Clive Rowland's, Ronan's um, friends and associates there's a um, they also go to Persepolis I can't even pronounce it Persepolis um, and then back to St Mary's, it's so hard doing this with a baby, uh, back to St Mary's where there is a traitor in their midst and they discover who has been assisting Clive Ronan and how he knows what's been going on and how he can get stay one step ahead of the St Mary's crew and the time police because they have a spy in their midst. But who is it? You'll have to read the book to find out. Uh, after that it was Stephen King Book of the Month, which is The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. This tells the story of a young girl named Trisha who is out hiking with her mother and her brother when her mother and brother start arguing. So sick of their constant arguing, she walks off the path to say, oh, so she says she thinks she's gonna need the loo. She doesn't really, but she does it deliberately. And then when she turns to go back, she can't find her way back to the path and she's lost in the woods. And it spends the next four days, a few days of how she survives in the woods with the few supplies she has and her Walkman radio listening to the um, baseball game and Tom Gordon uh, is her imaginary friend during this time and she does survive it's a great story it's a different one from Stephen King but I really really enjoyed it so I'm really enjoying picking up these um, other uh, Stephen King ones that I wouldn't necessarily have they're really short as well which is very handy with a little baby who managed to get lipstick on her head because she just hit me in the face you gorgeous girl uh, after that, I listened to another audio book, and this is a short story by Jodie Taylor. It is from the the Chronicles of St Mary, it's, and it is called the Battle, the the Battersea Barricades. And this tells the story of the People's Revolution of in the United Kingdom. The government was trying to uh, restrict freedoms. Um, all the other countries have sort of dispersed. Um, nobody travels abroad anymore because they just can't get there there's just no way of getting around and that's the way it stands in, uh, in St Mary's time which is only a few years into our future and it is a really funny one this one that had me laughing out loud because there's one scene in it um, where they talk about a member of the royal family coming back to take over to help and the Princess Mary was the, the, was the name um, comes to Cardiff because that's where it all started and makes an impassioned speech from a derelict bookshop in West Butte Street which of course is Accent Press's bookshop and Accent Press published the Chronicles of St Mary's Jodie Taylor's a frequent visitor to that location that just made me laugh out loud because although she didn't name the bookshop it was obviously that it was Octavo Books in Cardiff um, it was a great bookshop and cafe bar if you really want if you're in Cardiff Bay just head to West Street Street and go there. So as another funny great little story to tide us over till the next full length novel comes out, which won't be I don't think until next year, but there is another short story coming out soon called The Steampump Junk Jump, which we're all looking forward to. Uh, so yeah, I love The Chronicles of St Mary's. Again, at some point I will try and do a series overview of all the books, but I want to reread them uh, before I do that. And then, obviously with the audiobooks, I will put a picture of the cover up here. So. <laughs> Same as I do if I've read a Kindle book. I'm not reading my Kindle at the moment. I don't know why. Hello. All right. All right. And then I managed to read quite a thick book, which is Deja Dead by Kathy Rikes. This is a, one of the Temperance Brennan stories. Um, so, oh, <laughs> Jennifer, she's banging her head on me. Come here. So basically some decomposed bodies have turned up and Temperance Brennan sees a connection and she says, right, we've got a serial killer. People don't believe her and um, they find it hard to uh, believe that it is a serial killer just because of the, there doesn't seem to be anything to 
to link the the people, the victims. However, she keeps digging into it as a serial killer and becomes a target herself. And in fact, her friend Gabby becomes a victim of at least one of the killers in this book. There is more than one. Um, yeah, it, it was a really good one, actually. I really enjoyed it. I do like these. I'm, I'm reading these as and when I pick them up. I'm not in the order they're meant to be, sadly. Um, so it, uh, it's all over the place. But they, they are really good. I do like Kathy Rikes' work. And, and I really like Temperance Brennan. It's, it's nice. I, you know, I mean, she's a little bit more... I always find with these America, this one's set in Canada, this one's set in Quebec and Montreal and that sort of area is French Canada. Um, hence the, the French bits in the title. But um, a little bit more down to earth than Patricia Cornell's uh, characters. I think that, and it's only my view with Patricia Cornell's Scarpetta novels, is they've got a bit over the top and far out which I might I mean I, I'll elaborate when I read the next Patricia Cornwall which I, I will because I still read them but yeah I really enjoyed that then I listened to The Lost Symbol again I'll put a picture here by Dan Brown I read this book a few years ago and I could not remember a single word of it when I started listening to the audiobook and I always listened to the audiobook because I downloaded Inferno and or Origin and I wanted to listen to that one first because I knew I couldn't remember it and listening to it it actually stuck back with me better than reading originally so obviously we have Robert Langdon again um, it's full of Freemasonry uh, there is a man named Moloch who is searching for the lost symbol or the lost word of um, the ancient mysteries which the Freemasons are pledged to protect and protect it somewhere in Washington DC Peter Solomon uh, Robert Langdon's friend is head of the he's a 33rd degree Mason he's the bloke in charge um, he is kidnapped by Moloch and a message sent to Robert Langdon in the form of Peter Solomon's right hand. Not very nice. Peter Solomon's sister, sister, whose name is, I want to say Catherine, Catherine, um, is a scientist and she's practicing a form of science called noetic science. I don't know anything about it other than what was in the book. Um, somewhere in Washington and he's against that because it's about man being more spiritual and, and it's quite a complicated plot line and um, there's some really good scenes in it along the way um, Robert Langdon is in incapacitated in some way that you think he might be dead but he's not because and that's what stuck with me that well he can't be dead there's two more books after this um, but um, when they explain what had actually happened it made perfect sense and I really 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 enjoyed it so I'm looking forward to listening to um, Inferno next um, and I also read another one of the Wani Lee books which is Money Can Kill again this one's set in Cardiff this is a Cardiff Bay mystery in which uh, a, a young boy disappears at uh, St Fagans which is the Welsh Museum of History the National History Museum of Wales they call it St Fagans great place been there a couple of times and um, Basically, his mother won the, the lottery or a share of Euro millions. She wants like 11 million and the boy's been kidnapped and it's up to DCI Phelps and his team to try and find the boy and hopefully nothing bad will happen to him. Um, usual cast of characters, uh, everyone from DCI Phelps to the lady that runs the canteen in the, in the, in the, in the, poli in the police station. They is absolutely fantastic and really, I mean I love these books because you're reading about places you know and I know this may seem like a long rambly and boring video that doesn't make much sense but I don't make much sense at the moment because I'm too busy trying to read, colour, listen to records and look after this little thing as well because there she is. So those are the nine books that I read in April. I've already read two, which isn't much considering it's the ninth. Um, but she's at a stage now where if I'm not paying attention to her and she's awake, she'll kick off. Um, hence why she's sitting on my lap. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's done. we're doing okay, aren't we? Um, so you haven't seen the TBR jar for a while, and that's just simply because I still haven't read the Sebastian Fawkes books, which I can't even remember what it's called. And I should, because they did it at theatre last year. Let me just have a look, it's right in front of me. Birdsong. I still haven't read Birdsong, which is in the TBR jar. And you might notice that the book halls are getting less and less frequent. Again, this is just simply because 
I haven't got time to read as many, I haven't got as much money to spend on them, and I haven't got anywhere to put them. So I'm trying to read through my backlog of books and get through as many as I can, I'm getting rid of any of the copies of books that I don't particularly want um, by donating to charity shops and such. But I am trying to, to get on with it, and there will be more videos coming soon, book ones. Um, we have a review of Michelle Morgan's book, The Girl, which is about Marilyn Monroe. There's a Marilyn Monroe book haul to come, because I've now got enough books to do that. I've just got to bring them down, and that's never fun. <laughs> it's never the um, But yeah, that's what I read in April. I am currently working my way through all your booktube videos, because um, I've also got a new channel now, so I'll tell you about that in a minute. So I'm currently working my way through your booktube uh, videos and I'm unsubscribing to some people but not not the majority. The majority I'm keeping. I've got so many hobbies and I subscribe to so many different channels I need to, to get rid of some of them. I, I've got photography channels on there, I've got booktube channels on there, I've got colouring channels and I've got vinyl collection channels or VC vinyl community ones. Um, so I've started up a channel just for vinyl stuff um, called the Vinyl Vlog. So you know, head over and have a look if you want. I don't, you know, if you don't, don't worry about it. It's all about music. Um, so rather than put more record videos on here, I'm going to keep all those just separate because I know that's more of a specific thing. Um, and this channel will mostly be now for BookTube and colouring. Photography is not going anywhere at the moment. I just haven't got the time to go out and take photos nor do I have, to, uh, have an, an extra pair of hands. So that's what's going on with the photography. So it's mostly going to be book, booktube and colouring when I can and then the other top for the vinyl stuff and things like that. There will be the odd vlog. I may do vlogmas again this year. Probably will do vlogmas again this year um, and those may be posted on both booktube uh, on this channel, Andrea's Attic and on the vinyl vlog. It just depends. So that's it from this one. There's a bit of a ramble and a bit of a catch up with the channel. Um, I've got some books I really want to finish this month. <laughs> I've had a book going since January that's not even a big book. It's a photography book, so it's mostly full of photographs. I want to try and finish that. I want to crack on with Birdsong. I want to sort out my TBR jar and put some more into it because I'm just not reading through them as quickly as I'd like to. And um, I'm going to see if I can get through book song this month. If I get through bird song this month, then next month, um, at the end of May, we will reintroduce the um, the TBR jar. <laughs> see, my brain is shot. Uh, that's it for me. I'm going to go and make this one some food and make myself a cup of tea and some lunch. And I will see you all soon, hopefully with a less rambly, waffly video. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye. Jennifer, say goodbye.